Good morning. It's one week at sea. Seven days. Well, first there is a nice sunrise, and even if I'm not going as fast as I would like to, because you know I'm doing now at the moment I'm doing six knots, when I would rather be doing like surf at twelve knots or I mean twelve knots average. But you know. We got what we got and compared to yesterday evening now the sea state is pretty uh calm down the the night has been really long like just constantly waking up to adjust because the wind was shifty uh and really bumpy so it's really hard to find a sail trim that that's good and that's convenient now it's pretty much the case that the boat is just gliding nicely i can put like on wind vane mode so it follows the the wind variations i'm gonna take a breakfast now probably today i'll listen to the rankings see a bit what we're up to we sailed we sailed a thousand miles since the beginning so it's pretty good as well now the day starts let's go the trip you can choose one week you can choose 10 days depending on how long your uh, trip is but kind of you know one third one half into the trip you want to do an assessment of what you use of resources that you cannot uh, replenish so for example uh, water we are seven days into the trip I just finished the second uh, 10 liter tank of water so that's uh, 20 liter and I add also um, 3 liters into my uh, bottles. So that's 23 liters for 7 days, that's roughly, uh, that's a bit more than 3 liter uh, per day. So I'm consuming like uh, what I had planned. So I still have plenty of water. The weather ahead is still really weird. There is a weird towel bag with light wind. So I don't want to start, uh, you know, um, throwing water away to make me lighter, even if it would be for the racing perspective that, that the more I could, you know, throw away 20 liters. I would still have uh, 50 liters, which is more than enough, I think, for this passage. But, you know, just in case, uh, I'll, I'll keep that, uh, that water and uh, never know what, what can happen. So yeah, that's for uh, the water. I'm consuming, I know that I'm consuming as planned and I know that I still have plenty of water uh, to go. Now I'm going to do the same for the food. Here we go, same thing uh, for the food. I still have five days, 10 days, uh, and that's four days. So that's, I still have 14 days uh, of food. And in general, I'm not even eating all my ration every day. So imagine that, uh, you know, for some reason, I take much longer than planned to cross. It's easier to act now, knowing that, I don't know, maybe I've stuff into the, the provisioning or anything but I know that I can start rationing now and it will be easier to get to more after than you know if you start rationing like three days before you run out of food so that's the idea and also that's just the freeze-dry food I'm not counting the the, um, the, the cheat food you know the the, the, the the nice food or whatever is like sweets dry uh, um, dried fruits, all these kind of things that are sides. Uh, this is just for the kind of main dishes. So yeah, pretty much. Let's go, go, go. 
until another at least 24 hours with light wind like this. So it's around midday now. It's really the warmest part of the day. Been working about around the boat a little bit earlier and now I'm just hiding inside. I just come up every 10 minutes to trim the sails and make sure the boat is going uh, well. But otherwise I just hide inside. Otherwise I'll be roasting out there. Isn't much wind between 6 and 10 knots depending on the moment but at least we're moving and kind of in the right direction so can't complain and also I haven't seen anyone for the last kind of 48 hours or a bit more which is pretty good for me the others are probably somewhere south of me we'll see surprise surprise so now who knows Actually, you know, because you see the real-time uh, tracking, but I have no idea. All right, now back inside. Too warm here. See, at the moment I'm uh, here, and this is the ram line here. And my high pressure here with the ridge. Uh, there is a trough here with this low pressure. This is developing in the next few days. Basically, my my route stayed quite north. I chose to. It wasn't much wind. I did not want it to go south and get away from the um, from the route to get uh, stronger winds. So far, I think it paid off. Uh, but now the situation is kind of closing here and now is going to be the moment where I'm going to listen to the ranking um, I haven't listened to the ranking so far I was a bit scared I'm still scared uh, but now might be the moment where sailing the shortest route might not pay off because the guys have more wind in the south uh, but also I did almost a direct route, really little jibes, so I don't really know, I don't really know, uh, it's going to be interesting to look at this back uh, debriefing to the race tracker, but yeah, now I'm going to check the, um, the ranking to have an idea if the guy's on the south route, because I think I know who, who took the, the south route, uh, compared to me. So we'll see. Donc avant le classement, un petit anniversaire. Hugo Loras, uh, joyeux anniversaire à Hugo. Happy birthday to Hugo Loras. Happy birthday to other Hugo. Really scary. I'm glad it's not my birthday. Thank you. We check out the bucket series at Victor C. Production boat ranking at 8 UTC. Premier. First, 871 871. Louis Blanc. Second, the entrepreneur Google. What? At 1672. Okay, <coughs> so that's really strange. Cause I'm second. And I don't know if to be happy about it or not. It's just really disturbing because I sailed really close to the ram line, so I sailed a shorter distance. But now there is boats in between that are after me, like five, six position, with whom I was um, a few days ago. But there is also boats that I kind of knew went more south for a more south option, and these boats are just before 
uh, this boat I was with before. So it's really strange because if some boats went there, they got like more distance, but now they got more wind. But it doesn't make sense that the guy here actually goes slower than the guys here. So either I avoided a, a hole or something by going a bit more north. I don't know, that's really strange. Anyway, keep pushing the boat, keep moving, and then we'll see what happens. Alright, so not much wind as the last few days, but still a pretty nice light. Not complaining. So, um, the night has been pretty low, a little bit like that, a little bit more sometimes. Keep moving, and this morning there is something that appeared that wasn't here the, next few, the last few days. These clouds. See these little tips? These are cumulus. Cumulus means that there is some activity exchange in between the water that is warm coming up uh, onto the higher uh, altitude and this means that under the cumulus there is cool so I shall be monitoring this as well as possible today uh, not to get caught under cumulus with all my fluffy white sails uh, in the way so yeah, but now a uh, quick face shower time. All right, so this morning I was telling you that, you know, some cumulus started to appear and indeed there is more and more of them. And one thing that is interesting to note is that you see how they have a shape slightly uh, sideways. Uh, this is good because it means that the trades are active, even if they're not that active at the moment. It means that there is two mass of air, one like on the sea and one above. The one on the sea, the wind is blowing this way and the one above, the wind is blowing that way. Which means that the circulation is going onto the, the high pressure and that's why they sideways like this. They start to straighten up, it means that there is no circulation above and it means that the wind will uh, die. Rather than there, something something's happening at least. Well, uh, that was the weather forecast moment of the day.